Guys, welcome to Black Scout Survival. Most of you have probably heard by now Kamala Harris uh, running for president. Slated Tim Walz, uh, governor of Minnesota, as her running mate on Tuesday. He's an extreme far left choice. And that's how you know that he, as well as she, have been chosen by the puppet masters to take this country to the most extreme level of Marxism you could imagine. Because this would be the last choice from, from anyone. Very, very extreme uh, leftist, this guy. We're going to talk about that as well as he's been called out for stolen valor. Now, let's talk a little bit about his record as Minnesota governor. One thing is, I don't know if you guys saw, it, it replaced the Minnesota flag, the traditional one, with something that looks like a Somali flag because Obama essentially made Minnesota mini Somalia. And this will be coming to your rural town. This is a plan utilized by the socialists to essentially hit rural areas, red states, and import third world to them. That is that is what they're doing. That's what they're trying to do and accomplish here. Now, Waltz, Tim Waltz, Walls, I don't know how to say his name. Anyway, he passed legislation to give free college tuition to illegal immigrants in Minnesota. He signed a bill into law that will give driver's license to potentially 77,000 illegal aliens. He signed legislation to allow minors to get sex change operations in Minnesota. He signed a bill to require schools to stock period products in boys' bathrooms. Why would you do that? Not only that, but he encouraged the riots in Minneapolis after the death of George Floyd. Even the liberal mayor of Minneapolis, Jacob Frey, slammed walls response to the riots. He called for National Guard and was denied by Tim Walz. So here's a video of him basically saying there's no such thing as free speech. I need to push back on this. There, there's no guarantee to free speech on misinformation or, or hate speech, and especially around our democracy. I think we need to push back on this. Listen, guys, hate speech is free speech. What they call disinformation is free speech. Free speech is just that, being able to say what you feel, regardless if someone likes it or not. Here he's telling Anderson Cooper that he would supply ladders to illegal immigrants to cross over the border wall. I think seeing uh, a plan that's out there, talking about it with folks, knowing that he's not going to do anything. He, you know, he talks about this wall. I always say, let me know how high it is. If it's 25 feet, then I'll invest in the 30-foot ladder factory. That's not how you stop this. So yeah, very progressive. Progressive didn't work. This dude's a, a full-blown socialist. And again, this is very telling to the puppet masters. They don't care who they put in the position of president, vice president. They have a mission to destroy the fundamental constitutional rights of Americans. Now, his National Guard unit has basically came out and slammed him for many things. One, he slithered out the door before Iraq deployment. He also listed on his official biography a higher military rank than one he retired with. So there, some veterans are accusing him of stolen valor. Now, they, they say, again, he lied about his rank and that he quit the National Guard upon learning that they were going to be deployed to Iraq. Apparently, he was demoted and did not retire as a sergeant, command sergeant major. He did hold the rank, but he did not retire that. And apparently, he put out all kinds of information saying that he retired at this rank. So, he also bailed out on his artillery unit when they were ordered to Iraq. Um, I'm going to let you hear one of the guys that served with him talk about that. He turned and ran the other way and hung his hat up and quit. I was like, well, for Pete's sake, if this guy quit, 
If I say I'm not going to do it, I mean, what the hell kind of leadership is that? But then we fast forward to the election in 2018 in Minnesota, and you try at that time to get people's attention with this story and also with what seems to be a very misleading statement that he continued to make about his service. It kind of just sat there, you know, when he was a congressman, he, you know, he bragged that he was, he was a command sergeant, retired command sergeant major. I'm the highest ranking person ever in the, in the house and, you know, all this lie that he was telling. The state of Minnesota came out after 2018, after this was exposed, and they said, well, he can say that he served as a command sergeant major. But he can't say he's a retired one because he's not. And that's what he was saying. And he was saying that, and there was lots of public, you know, lots of cards coming in the mail, you know, for him to be elected. They said right on there, he's a retired command sergeant major, just tooting his own horn, just. So this gentleman was not the only one that have called him out. Many have called him out. And he was actually questioned by the press today. And this was his response. He went running. He went running quicker than he did for his deployment to Iraq. Right. <laughs> so J.D. Vance did call him out. Check it out. But what really bothers me about Tim Waltz, it's not even the positions that he's taken, though certainly he has been a far left radical. You know what really bothers me about Tim Waltz as a Marine who served his country in uniform? When the United States Marine Corps, when the United States of America asked me to go to Iraq to serve my country, I did it. I did what they asked me to do it, and I did it honorably, and I'm very proud of that service. When Tim Waltz was asked by his country to go to Iraq, you know what he did? He dropped out of the Army and allowed his unit to go without him, a fact that he's been criticized for aggressively by a lot of the people that he served with. I think it's shameful to prepare your unit to go to Iraq, to make a promise that you're going to follow through, and then to drop out right before you actually have to go. But what really bothers me about Tim so the left, you know, have, have been very good for character assassinations. We've seen that. And I think it's probably about time, it's been time that uh, conservatives, Republicans should do the same. This is very telling of the individual and his leadership ability. Would you want someone like this? But not to mention that, the amount of crazy things this guy has put into place and changing the state flag was was pretty bizarre. But as well as being very, very pro illegal immigration. His stances on many things are just very Marxist, socialist, communist, whatever you want to call it. But I did like the way uh, uh, Vance annihilated him there. But make no mistake, these guys, Kamala, the puppet masters, Tim, they're coming for your constitutional rights, 100%. And their number one agenda right now is firearms. Why? Because firearms is what separates us from all the other countries around the world because you can't really push us too much, right? Um, and some people may argue that point, but the problem is, is that if you look at the country as a whole, and if something was to go really awry where the government was trying to become tyrannical, you would have millions of Americans separated all over the country and you would it would be too difficult for the U.S. military, National Guard, police, or whatever to get a grasp on these things. It would be extremely chaotic, to say the least. It would, it would be too much for the American government to handle, and they know that, and they would never want to push that far. But if you remove that from Americans, it makes it much easier. Here, Kamala states it outright. Listen to her. Universal background checks, red flag laws, and an assault weapons ban. And to get assault weapons ban, that's something they want very badly. Now, I also have a clip that resurfaced of Tim Walsh stating one, a stolen valor, saying that he went to war when he did not. But he's also talking about weapons of war, talking about AR 15s. Listen to him. 
Hope woke up like many of you did five weeks ago and said, Dad, you're the only person I know who's in elected office. You need to stop what's happening with this. I'll take my kick in the butt for the NRA. I spent 25 years in the Army and I hunt. And I gave the money back. And I'll tell you what I have been doing. I've been voting for common sense legislation that protects the Second Amendment. But we can do background checks. We can do CDC research. We can make sure we don't have reciprocal carry among states. And we can make sure that those weapons of war that I carried in war is the only place where those weapons are at. So he never carried a weapon of war in war. But the other thing that is notable about this is he said he's a hunter. This is always the thing Joe Biden says, I'm a hunter. The Second Amendment does not talk about hunting. It talks about defending against the tyrannical government. That is what the forefathers had to do themselves against the tyrannical government. But make no mistake, it's, it's just like every piece of gun legislation. It is chipping away to ultimately remove guns completely. That's why it's so important to protect all of them, even the bump stocks that Trump took. Everything is an inch by inch down to you will not be able to have a black powder rifle. Uh, that is the way it's going to go. Because trust me, after they were to take assault weapons, it would be, oh, well, we don't need to have semi-automatic pistols. And then all oh, you should only be able to have uh, a revolver with six, six rounds. Oh, those are bad too. You know what? Um, no, no guns, period. Maybe uh, bow and arrows. But then bow and arrows uh, are bad. Com uh, compound bows are uh, almost as lethal as a gun, so let's take those. Then knives. And then you'll be like Australia where you can't even have a, a freaking pocket knife. Make no mistake. That is what will happen here. Of all the things they've done and how progressive the country has moved in three years, I think everyone should, spidey senses should be flaring right now. And I'm very concerned about this election. A lot of people think it's a drop in the bucket. I don't believe so at all. I saw that uh, Joe Biden said today there would not be a peaceful transfer of power if Trump won. And you can see all the various different things that the video I did last night. If you didn't watch that, make sure you go watch that. The bulletin that came out saying that, well, the election results may not come in quick, uh, quickly or timely. Um, you know, and we have Democrat politicians calling for a civil war or saying, saying they will not uphold the vote count if Trump wins, that he will be deemed ineligible. So there's so many things to this that I think that. And, and you have tons of conservatives that don't like Trump. I'm not saying you need to like him as a man, but do you want Kamala or Tim Walz? I have a clip of him saying right here that he is he believes in socialism. Listen to him. Don't ever shy away from our progressive values. One person's socialism is another person's neighborliness. Don't ever, don't ever shy away from our progressive values. One person's socialism is another person's neighborliness. One person's socialism is another person's neighborliness. Scary. Socialism ultimately is communism. And again, this dude just said he's pro-socialism. I think that Regardless of whatever you feel about Trump, <laughs> do you want socialism, ultimate communism? And you have people right there saying they're going to take firearms. They said it. It's about, do you, do you want the enemy you know or the enemy you don't know? Right? Because ultimately all politicians to cer certain level are uh, self-serving. But do you want the ones that are really going to come after you? you you can barely afford groceries now you look at all these different things anyway guys i wanted to share this information i do got one more thing for you i came out with a new new knife new knife uh it's been a long time coming this is something i've wanted to do for quite some time and i'm doing a special deal for you guys N knives are something that I always have on me i think they're critical and especially a survival knife you know a four to five inch blade is the ideal survival knife for me we came out with something known as the BSS-5 before with a, uh, another maker. That maker turned out to be a huge problem, so we quit dealing with him. We got a new maker, and we've got the BSS-4, right? So this is the BSS-4 right here. It is a stonewash finish, D2 steel. I wanted to make something affordable. G10 texture scales here. Lanyard hole. Nice Kydex sheath with a belt clip in it. Can 
configured to the other direction too, so you can have it horizontal. So that way you can have it in the front of your, um, I'll show you on my person in a moment, but extremely well-made knife and you have jimping here, stone wash finish, just like all the other products you expect from Black Scout to uh, be very high quality. And this is to me and all around, you can carry this as the EDC blade every day. Um, there was actually what, what led me to this was years ago, a guy, he quit making these knives, but he was like some type of first responder. And he started making a knife. Now his was a little smaller than this, but I wanted something a little more robust, right? For survival craft, like this could be your one tool option here. That's kind of what we designed it as, but you see in the hand, I can do most everything with, I can use this as a defensive knife as well, but he, he made these knives and he, and he configured them to where like right here on the belt, right? So you could change this tech lock to this direction and have this thing sitting here. So you have it right here. And so that gentleman quit making knives years ago, but I like the concept. I like being able to have a knife on you at all times. And this can go to most places and a fixed blade is something you want in a survival situation because you need something that have that hinge there that could break, but a good quality uh, instrument here, right? Something that you can depend on. And I believe that everyone should have a good fixed blade knife. So what I'm doing for this introduction of the, the BSS-4 is that on the website right now, they're, they're gonna be $135, but right now through the weekend, you can get it for $100, so $35 off. I've already seen some people buying a few of them. And, and if you buy a couple of them, it's almost like you got one for free. So anyway, um, I wanted to come up with a, a good quality knife at, a, at a, a good price because I understand just like you, I have to go grocery shop and I have to put gas in my truck and everything's expensive. I want to do something for you guys and especially uh, give you a, a discount as we introduce this uh, blade. I'm very proud of it. And I'm always, I'm always proud of the gear we um, make. You know, it's like kind of like the wristband comps is here. This is one of our best selling items. We sell these things, man, can't keep up with them. Titanium compass here, because I always like to have some kind of uh, navigation real quick. I can navigate with the compass. But anyway, guys, it's on the website now. And I just want to share this information about Tim Walls because I know a lot of people uh, maybe not have heard about it. And I want to get that out there to slam this dude. Anyway, guys, we're going to say Frosty, stay strapped and always stay dangerous. Take care.